Hi, Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts with a little snippet. There's a song that Yolanda Adams sings called Take Away. Look it up on the internet. It's a beautiful song. I don't know it by heart, excuse me, but the part that touches me the most. Take away every desire in me that hurts you. Take away anything in me that breaks your heart. I want to be what you desire me to be. It's my desire that you find pleasure in me. Lord, take away anything that displeases you. You know, we really, 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 really need to pray against ourselves at times. Sometimes we are our worst enemy. Our mouths, our mind, our hearts, our attitudes. And sometimes we have the can't help it. It's almost like a, a the case of diarrhea of the mouth. We don't always know when to shut up. And I'm telling you, that's why we need the Holy Spirit too. Because there are times the Holy Spirit will say, zip it, baby. And you feel it inside like, okay, I better shut up. Because it's getting ready to get ugly in here. Do you hear what I'm saying? So that's why we need to be prayerful. We need to draw close to God. We need self-control. The Bible calls it temperance. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is temperance. Without it, we are like a loose cannon, baby. We can do much much damage, much damage. You know, most of my emotional scars, you know where they came from? People's words, people's words, negative input, criticisms, snide remarks. That's where they came from. Not from the booty whoopings my father gave me. I knew I deserved those. But I'm telling you, those words that I got from other folks in my family cut me down like a shredded piece of meat. And it took God, it took God to heal me because I, I couldn't, no, no medicine, no psychiatrist could have undone that, that hurt. But when you allow yourself to be totally out of control and you just let your words fly where you want to fly and cuss somebody out the way you want to cuss them out and you want to tell your kid they ain't about nothing and oh my goodness or or you have these little snide ways of giving compliments but they're really backhand backhanded uh insults oh you really feeling that dress out mm. I remember when that dress used to hang loose on you. Yeah, maybe you been you need to go shopping there, girl. <laughs> we just there's something in us, I don't know what it is, some of us that just enjoy slicing people down to nothing, cutting them to shreds. Spitting them out, chewing them up, spitting them out, uh, just busting their little bubbles. What is it about some of us? Or somebody will come in and they'll be all excited because they did something wonderful and they got all these um, compliments for it and everybody is so excited about what they did. But you, you have to sit there with your arms folded. Hmm. Okay. You dare not give them a compliment. You just give them that look. Because something in you is so soured when other people get any kind of compliments or other people get any kind of glory. You can't stand it. You don't even like it. 
and you're looking at them like, yeah, look at them gloating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they gloating. They think they all that in a bag of chips. See, I, 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 get, I let them know what they are. All they got to do is ask me. I tell them. Why? Why must you? Why must you be the ego police? Why can't you just let a person have their moment and celebrate with them? But no, that poison is coming out of your pores and out of your, 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 your thoughts, your mouth. You can just smell it all around you. Everybody knows you're going to be the one person that grows real cold when somebody's celebrating a victory. Huh, that's the flesh. Those are those little subtle workings of the flesh. And that's why it stinks. To high heaven, all the way up to the nostrils of our God. And he doesn't like it. <laughs> when the Bible says celebrate with those who are joyful and weep with those who are hurt, some of you just will not do that. Somebody comes in crying because they went through some hardship, whether it was their fault or not, and you'd be sitting up there crossing your arms saying, ha, I knew that was going to happen, girl. Shoot, that woman so stupid put herself in that position. What she get? Well, other people are looking at the woman. Oh, come on, sit down. Come on, let's talk. Maybe trying to help them figure out how they got into it, try to get out of it as unscathed as possible. But they're hurting with her, but not you. Oh, no, not you. You glad she's in that mess. Serve her behind right. That's your attitude. Because you're operating in the flesh, not the spirit of God. God is the one to judge, not you. So you need to get out of his seat. Because judging is another work of the flesh. I'm telling you. You got to be careful about that stuff. Because when the Bible says to the same measure that you judge somebody else, be the same measure that you're judged. Yeah, You don't want that to happen. So you better ask God if you can't find any mercy in you. Lord, give me mercy because I'm so glad that she's going through what she's going through. Be honest. God already knows that. Lord, take that out of me. I know you don't like it. Take away everything in me that hurts you. Take away everything that breaks your heart. I want to be what you want me to be. It's my desire that you take pleasure in me. Take away everything that displeases you. Yeah, that song is something else. And it, the meat, the words, the, oh, that is my heart's cry. And I hope one day it's some of yours. I know some of you already feel that way. Some of you feel it even more than I do. But for those of you who are just hardened from your cynicism and sarcasm, I really hope and pray that God is able to tenderize your heart without having to soften your behind to do so. God bless you.